السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين استطاع من الله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كل نفس ذائقة الموت ثم إلينا ترجعون صدق الله العظيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أكثر الذكر هذه من لذات الموت أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام Respected elders and brothers, all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has given us the tawfiq and the ability to come early to his house to listen to the words of Allah and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us for a reason in this world. And the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us is that so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could test us to see that insan will he do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants in the world will he obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and will he fulfill the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or will he do vice versa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he was in the alim arwah from the time the souls that way arwah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before a person is born in this world Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already specified the amount of time for each person har shakhs ke liye Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ne waqt muqarrar kiya hai ke ye insaan wo 40 saal rahega duniya mein ye insaan 80 saal rahega ye insaan 100 saal rahega aur ye insaan sirf 10 saal ya 20 saal rahega duniya mein so every person is specified a time whether he's going to live in this world, whether it's 40 years, 60 years, 80 years, 100 years, and some people 20 years and younger. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the average age of my ummah, average age is between 60 and 70. So that doesn't mean if I'm not 60 or 70 that I am going to reach 60 and 70. No, that's the average age. Because the age of the previous nations, they used to live for hundreds of years and thousands of years. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made. That look at the age of Nuh alayhi salam. He comes only, he, he's giving da'wah to his nation. Sirf da'wah dena. Not his umar, not his age. Just giving da'wah 950 years. So you can imagine his age. Must have been more than that. But the age of this umrah, the average age, 60 to 70 years in this world. And every person, he knows when he is born. You ask a person, when is your birth date? So every person can say that this is my birth date. But you ask a person, when is your expiry date? Yeah. When is your time to go? Nobody will be able to say. Yeah. Whether a person wants to go or don't want to go, that's a different situation. Uh, some people, they don't want to die. They say, no, I'm going to stay forever and ever. Yeah. But they know they will have to die one day. Yeah. That they will die one day. Yeah. Whether they like it or not. Yeah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this time. Yeah. And time is such that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken qasam of it in the Quran. Yeah. We read in the Salah, Wal Asr. Inna al insana lafi khusr. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاسَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاسَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ In Surah Al-Asr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes off with regards to time. That verily, إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِيَ خُسْ Verily, man is in loss. هَرْ إِنسَانُ وَخَسَارَ مَيْهِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Except those who bring iman, who bring faith. مَغْرَ وَلَوْجِ جِنُونَ إِيمَانَ لَيَا وَعَمِلُ الصَّالِحَاتِ And they do good actions, good deeds. اچھے کام کیے ہیں. اچھے کام کرتے ہیں. وَتَوَاسُوا بِالْحَقِ And they give wasiyah. They exhort one another. They encourage one another towards doing good deeds, towards doing good actions. ایک دوسرے کو وسیعت اچھے اعمال پر وسیعت کرتے ہیں. مدد کرتے ہیں اچھے کاموں میں. وَتَوَاسَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ And they exhort one another, they encourage one another to bear patience. Ek dousra ko sabar ki siyat kate hai. 
So just this surah, uh, one of the Sahabi radiallahu anhu mentions if the entire Quran, none of the Quran was revealed and only this surah, it would be sufficient. Because everything comes inside this surah. That the first thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes off of time, qasam of time. Uh, today we say, you know, time is money. Uh, we say in English, time is money. What does this mean? Uh, that with this time I can either earn money or if I waste away this time, then I can lose money as well. Uh, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking qasam on time to show how important what is coming in front, what he is mentioning in front, what is how important it is uh, that all of insan, all of humanity, they are all in loss uh, uh, except those who bring Iman, except those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, except those who are faith uh, and wa'amilu salihat and do, do good actions. Uh, uh, they bring forth good actions to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they help others in doing good. Uh, today, sad to say, is we help others in doing bad. Uh, come on, let's go to the movies together. So, you're making mother of the person to doing, committing sin. You're taking him to the movie house. Don't worry, I'll pay your ticket for you. Uh, you are helping him in evil, in wrong. A person comes to your house, <coughs> comes to meet you. Dawat ke liye aaye, aur namaz ka waqt ho gaya. Namaz ka waqt ho raha hai. Your duty is that you bring that person to the masjid. But you say, koi baad nahi, hum ghar par pal lenge. So you are helping him bad by missing his jamaat, with uh, salah with jamaat. So we are supposed to be helping in good, uh, assisting each other in good. Uh, and with regards to sabr, assisting each other in sabr, thinking wasiya of sabr, uh, here can be a few meanings with regards to sabr. That one is with regards to any musibah, any hardship that comes upon a person, a person makes sabr. So say for example, if a person, you know, something bad happens to him or some tragedy befalls someone, for some nation, then you give a wasiya of sabr to make patience that it is all good and bad. Wal qadri khayrihi wa sharrihi min Allah Taala. That all good and bad is from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So make sabr, patience, uh, and anything that befalls you. And there's also sabr with regards to in obedience of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Uh, what so, sabr in obedience of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala? Uh, that is the time of fajr salah. And you are very tired and you have to wake up to perform for just salah. Uh, and then you notice there's only cold water coming out of the tap. There's no hot water. Now you have to make wudu with cold water. So now you're making wudu with that cold water. You know, you're feeling cold and, you, and you're making sabar upon this. So this is sabar with regards to doing good. Uh, and then also sabar with regards to staying away from evil. Hmm? That Shaitan and nafs, they are your enemies. Uh, and there is a time where you can commit an evil sin. Nobody is looking at you. Uh, you are alone at home. It is in the darkness of the night. Uh, you have your computer there. You have everything available to you. Uh, and you can commit a haram. You can look at haram. There's a woman walking in the street. Nobody's looking at me. I can look at her. Uh, oh, I can commit any kind of haram. I can watch any kind of haram. And nobody is looking at me. But at this time, you make sabr on that masiyad, on the by not committing that sin. So this is also a type of sabr. Uh, so this is what it is, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us with regards to in Surah Al-Asr, how important it is that those people who bring iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they do good actions and they help and assist in doing good actions and they help and assist in making uh, in sabr. And like I was mentioning, time is which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. This time will come to an end one day. Uh, just came to my mind, I was thinking, just got the news this morning. One youngster from Bolton, he, tragically, he was in holiday in Dubai. He passed away 
in an accident on a jet ski. In his 20s, youngster, enjoying himself on a jet ski, met up in an accident, passed away. Who knows when their time will come? Nobody has any guarantee whether he's going to live for the next year, next month, next week, next day, not even the next second. Nobody has any guarantee. Uh, Moth will come, achanak will come just like that all of a sudden. Uh, and how a person will live in this world, that's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take him from this world. Uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أَكْثِرُ الذِّكْرَ هَذِي مِنْ لَذَّاتِ الْمَوْتِ that remember excessively uh, the, the breakers of desires, you know. And what is that? Mote, death. Uh, a person has to, today, I was sitting last week, I went for a nikah of my nephew and niece. So the Sheikh was giving, Sheikh Muhammad Salim Dorat was giving a talk, and he was saying, Aaj hum sab ghaflat mein hai. Uh, Today we are all in total negligence. And he says, not, not, people, not only people who we think that are not dindar, jo dindar log bhi hai, wo bhi ghaflat mein hai. Khub ghaflat mein, he was saying. So he say, even people who we consider to be pious, even we are in negligence. Even uh, that our life is in how much negligence? He was saying that if we think today, we look at our lives and we only see the good things in front of us. From the time that I woke up till now, till I come for Jummah Salah, if I look back and focus on my memory, then you'll think of all the good things I did. Or I assist my wife in the kitchen, I helped her with the dishes. Or I came to the masjid walking for uh, Salah. I've come early to the masjid. I read two rakats and I sat in the masjid. And I gave some charity before I came to the masjid. And then I read in my surah kahaf before I came to the masjid. I'm listening in the bayan. But never will we focus on the evils and the bad that we had did, he said. He said, we don't focus on the evils and the bad things that we have done. Only shaitan, this is a deception of shaitan, he was saying. He will only show us the good that we have done. He will not show us the bad things that we have done. But if we think, what bad have I did today? Uh, from the morning till now. Uh, what disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have I did? How many things did I go against the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So he was saying what we need to do is we need to make two lists. One list is all the good things that I do in my life. And one list is all the bad things that I have in my life. So start with all the good things. Alhamdulillah, I read my five times salah with jama'ah. Alhamdulillah, I make my tilawat of Quran one juice a day. Alhamdulillah, I do my tasbihat daily in the morning and evening istighfar, durud sharif, and third kalima. Alhamdulillah, I make my zikr of la ilaha illallah every day hundred times. Uh, make a list of all the good things that you do. I give charity every day this much. Okay? And then make a list of all the bad things that you do. Okay, many other I have got this habit of watching TV. TV is haram. Uh, people say, they say that. Molisa, but what if it's an Islamic channel? What if it's an Islamic channel? Allah jo hai, wo to khudi haram hai. The instrument which you are using, it is haram in itself. By doing one good, it doesn't make all other evils permissible. I will tell you even certain, even though we will say Islamic channel or whatever it is, you will get a rare mahram coming onto the screen. So you looking at the ghair mahram, you are committing a haram. Listening to the ghair mahram's voice, you are doing haram. Uh, when the break comes, when music plays in between, listening to music is haram. Uh, so how many harams are being committed? Nobody, no person can say, guarantee that the only thing I watch on the TV at home is only good. Uh, nobody, besides that, there is nothing else that I watch any other channels I watch, or my children or my family watch. So, this is a deception of shaitan. Make a list of the bad habits that we have. Okay, this is my bad habit. I have a bad habit of looking at women. I have a bad habit of listening to music. I have a bad habit of drinking. I have a bad habit, whatever 
between you and Allah, nobody else. Make all the list. Now see a person's life. Now you can see in front of you is all the good things I do and all the bad things I do. Now I have to make an effort. This is what Sheikh Mohammed Salim Dorat was saying. Now I have to make an effort. If after 10 years or 15 years of my life, those good things are how they are, that is the same good things I'm doing. I haven't done more, I haven't done less. Then is there improvement in my life? There's no improvement in my life. Yeah. It's the same, exactly the same things I've done. So there is no improvement in my life. And if the bad things that were in my life are still there in my life, is there any improvement in my life? No. So he said, now we have to make a work, an effort. All the bad things which are in my life, I want to take out, erase one by one, slowly. No person can become a wali of Allah Bazaruk in, in a few seconds or a minute. So these, all these bad things which are in my life that, okay, this week, I'm going to leave this evil habit from my life. I've got this habit, I'll take it out of my life and I won't do it. I'll make a promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, Ya Allah, I make tawbah from this sin and I will never commit this sin again. So erase this bad habit from your life. And increase like that till all the bad habits that a person has in their life are erased from there. And the good habits, build on them. On each one, see how sincere am I in them. Ikhlas ke itibase. Kitna ikhlas hai har amal mein. And then how regularly am I doing each action with punctuality? Take a record of yourself. And then see after that, that am I building upon it or is it the same that I'm doing? Is my salah improving or is it the same as it was? Am I increasing my recitation of the Quran or is it the same that it was? So in the good actions also and in your bad actions also. So a person will keep stock of himself. A person will keep stock of himself. And he will increase. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when a person makes an effort to doing good deeds, Allah will assist him in doing good deeds. When a person makes an effort in staying away from haram and bad, Allah will assist him. And if a person is near, his intention is, our intention should be, he said, that how the level in which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa left the sahaba radiallahu anhum, that is the level which is required. For every mu'min, for every believer. Yes, no person can reach even the dust which is on the shoes of the Sahaba. That was their rank. But if a person has the intention and he makes the right effort and he dies before this time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will resurrect him with such people on the day of Qiyamah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was rahmatun lil alameen. He is the best of examples. He is the perfect human being to come on the face of the earth. If we follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we will gain complete success in this world as well as the Akhirah. This is another thing I remembered because the other day some posts came here in the masjid. So one of the brothers made me aware of it. Open the post up and na'uzu billah. There was a book written by a person. It was written the title, All the Mistakes Which the Prophet Muhammad Made in His Life. And this person has written a letter to say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent him as a messenger, which he saw in a dream, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa saying that these were the mistakes that I had made, and you have to correct the mistakes of the ummah. What is, what is the thinking of a person? One is our iman and our belief is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was khatum al nabiyyin He was the seal of all prophethood. No prophet is to come after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Any person who claims to be a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is a liar. Kullam kulla liar. Everybody he has this firm belief. And any person who does assist in kind of things, these kind of things, he is being deceived. This certain person, he has made reservation, he's from Germany, but the, I can't remember his first name, to come to England to start, you know, making his dawah, his claim that he's a prophet. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa had mentioned that a time will come in my ummah that there will be many Dajjals. Yeah? Before the 
final Dajjal that comes before him, there will be many Dajjal. Dajjal means liar. Uh, there are many people who will lie and who will claim to be prophets. Uh, but a person knows that his faith and his Iman, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was last of prophethood. And any person in our belief, if any person says anything or utters anything or writes anything against Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa his Iman is in khatra. His Iman is in danger. And those people who do this, our, what our stance should be towards them. One is as believers, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa showed us the perfect example. Even those who did the worst to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa desired hidayah for them. So we would say that whatever the person says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them hidayah. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not wish hidayah for them, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should deal with them in the appropriate way. But what I want to bring forth that these things, these kind of literature that goes around and people inviting towards these things, we have to be aware of it. We might know it ourselves, but what about our younger generation? We have to worry about them as well. That unka akida bi kharam no hajaye. It is not only the duty of the Moni Sahib or the Imam Sahib in the Masjid that he teaches the children everything, but it is our duty as parents at home as well that we inculcate the Sahih Aqeedah in our children, uh, the correct beliefs in our children, uh, that we have to remind them uh, that this is your, uh, this is your beliefs, uh, this is what you have to bring Iman in, uh, and you have to tell them, you have to make them understand being as a Muslim, what is your responsibility? Uh, every ummati of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he is responsible for the entire ummah. And the entire ummah is responsible for every ummati of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his desire was that how can each and every person be safe from the fire of Jahannam and enter into Jannah. This was the desire of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa worry and concern should also become our worry and concern. That how can each and every person be safe from the fire of Jahannam and enter into Jannah. Now this will not happen if we just say it, but we have to make an effort towards it. Like everything in the world, if you want to achieve, we have to make an effort. We want a nice car, we have to make an effort. We want a nice house, we have to make an effort. Even if we want to decorate our house, it's not going to get decorated on its own. You make an effort towards it. We want to earn money, we have to make an effort. So even for Dean, for complete Deen to come into our lives, to come into our family's lives, and to, comp to come into the entire humanity, we have to make an effort. 